Very Live from uh, RAF uh, Scampton, famous runway here, uh, you know the history, um, so many famous stories attached with here, planes that have flown on the runway, not just the uh, RAF Red Arrows of course, but in the past the Vulcans and uh, before that of course back to the Dambusters, uh, Lancaster 617 Squadron. We talked about it in uh, detail some, uh, some weeks back and there has been an airfield here for more than 100 years. Hundreds of RAF uh, personnel and their families, civilians live here and work here, 600 on the base. Well I've been to the village of Scampton this afternoon talking to local people about today's announcement. You can see what the red arrows mean to the village of Scampton. This is the roof of the bus shelter, would you believe? 1916 RAF Scampton started, so today is a big day. I've come to the village. Let's see what some of the people here make of today's news. Well, it's a very sad day for the community. There's uh, so many links stretching back for uh, so many years between uh, Scampton and, and the RAF. It would be a sad, sad day to see, it, uh, it, see those links broken and disappear. What's your reaction to today's news? I think like everybody else, a little bit um, puzzled, bothered, worried, surprised, a bit concerned that the red arrows are going to disappear from Lincolnshire because they're synonymous with the area. To do this is just not right. It's just not right at all, Peter. G given that it's going to happen, should there be some sort of heritage memorial? Oh, well, well, definitely. There's got to be. There's got to be. I mean, the place is legendary, you know, it's... You can't just say that's it. In the churchyard here at Scampton, rows and rows of graves of RAF personnel who over the years have lost their lives, all buried in the village of Scampton here. On a personal basis, I was absolutely devastated. I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't. I've been here for over 30 years, and, I st and, and my, my kitchen window overlooks where they practice at 8 o'clock every morning, um, and I get the same excitement now as I did in the very, very beginning. And that is so true for many of us, isn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, absolutely. And it's going to affect the village, isn't it? It's got oh, to. Oh, it's certainly going to affect the village. It's certainly going to affect the Dambusters pub. Um, because uh, we had Johnny Johnson here only a few, you know, a few weeks ago. Um, and um, it really is just devastating news for everybody, heart, I'm sure. Heart ripped out of village? Well, I wouldn't go quite that far, but it certainly will be a great big chunk. Greg, landlord at the Danbusters Inn, this must be a very sad day for you. Uh, nine years I've been here and uh, we've grown and grown and grown. And on the 100th anniversary of the REF, it's, uh, it's a big shame that you can bring out news like this after 100 years of the RAF. I just hope that they remember Bomber Command and everything that happened during the war and that Scampton has always been a bomber base and to retain the heritage and the history of the base. Well, I have to say it was uh, so good good being in the village this afternoon and I have to say after all this long time that I've been doing this job it's the first time I've been into the uh, Dambusters Inn which was uh, absolutely fantastic if you've not been then I highly recommend that you go thanks to the people of Scampton for uh, talking to us this afternoon and just to remind you that the MOD wants to save three billion pounds by 2040 um, as I mentioned earlier it's not just it's not just here uh, RAF Scampton it's also RAF uh, Linton on Ouse in North Yorkshire now it was in 1916 1916 that the first planes flew from here at Scampton. Since then it's been the home uh, to not only the Red Arrows but before that another of course of the world's most fl famous flying squadrons and that is the Dambusters. Well Simon Spark now on the part that this base has played over the years in Britain's history. Wing Commander Gibson VC who led the Great Lancaster Raid on the Ruhr Dams escorts the King during a visit by their Majesties to an air station in the north of England. If you think of RAF Scampton's history, maybe the first thing that comes to mind is how the Dambusters raid flew out of here in May 1943, taking off along a grass runway before the base was closed to upgrade it. The mission cemented Scampton's name in RAF history as the base of the 617 Squadron. But actually Scampton is one of the RAF's oldest stations, and its history began way before this. 
So this aircraft we have here um, is a Sopwith Camel, uh, one of the finest fighters built in World War I. And it was this aircraft that was used at Scampton, known then as Brattleby, uh, in defence of the Zeppelin attacks against this county. And as you can see, it was a massive machine and carried quite a large bomb load. This map shows the intensity of the raids by Zeppelins over just a couple of months in 1916, which included the bombing of RAF Scampton. It actually dropped three bombs on the airfield itself, yes, flying overhead. It then continued on its mission and actually bombed Waddington and then Bracebridge Heath on the same night. The squadron was airborne. During the Cold War in 1960, Scampton was on the front line, with the Vulcan bomber carrying Britain's nuclear deterrent. The runway was extended to 10,000 feet to accommodate these colossal aircraft. And of course it's known for being home of the Red Arrows, who initially came here in 1983 and stayed until 1995. They then moved to RAF Cranwell when a decision was taken to close RAF Scampton on military and economic grounds. There'd already been a long campaign against it. We're going to fight back and we will make sure that we are involved in every step of the way in the future for Scampton. The local school saw a 20% drop in pupil numbers, but then in 2000... I'm pleased to announce that after careful consideration, I've decided that the Red Arrows should return to RAF Scampton on a permanent basis. They've stayed here ever since with proud association to this historic airbase. I mean the history of Scampton is the history of the Royal Air Force going back to the First World War where they were protecting the skies of this country and the county through to the Second World War where they were taking the fight to the enemy over in Germany and on to the Cold War where the Vulcans were actually still guarding this country so the history of this country and the history of this country's air force is tied up in Scampton. Simon Spark, BBC Look North. Yeah, so fascinating. Uh, a lot of the history there uh, and a lot of facts that people wouldn't have known. The uh, Red Arrows were here, then they weren't here. And then, of course, in the year uh, 2000, 18 years ago, it was announced that the uh, Red Arrows were coming back to uh, Scampton. Well, on this uh, important day, let's have a reminder of the main national and regional headlines. At least 79 people are killed by wildfires destroying forests and seaside towns in Greece. And Scampton for sale. The Ministry of Defence confirms that the home of the Red Arrows will be closed. Tomorrow's weather then dry and bright with partly cloudy skies and spells of sunshine. It's going to feel very warm. Top temperatures in the afternoon getting up to 27 Celsius. 27 is 80 Fahrenheit. Well, uh, as you know, on this uh, day that it's been announced that uh, RAF Scampton will be sold in four years' time. Joining me now is reti retired Air Vice Marshal and pilot Jerry Connolly, a former commander at an RAF base in Cambridgeshire. Uh, good evening to you. Uh, good evening, Peter. Very good to see you. Uh, first of all, what is your uh, reaction to what you've heard today and the news? Well, it's clearly very sad that uh, the station is closing. Um, but I guess in some ways it's been a long time coming. We've just seemed to have known that this was going to happen at some point and today unfortunately is the day. Are we funding the RAF enough? Is, is, because they're saying that this is being done to save money. Is, is, is that the right path to go down? In terms of the Royal Air Force's future operations, Scampton, you have to say, is not necessary for that operation. It, it, at the end of the day, money has to be clearly spent in the most reasonable and sensible way that can be done. And sometimes that means the closure of things like bases like Scampton and indeed Linton News, where I, funny enough, trained as a pilot. Mm -hmm. So it, it, that, that is the way of the future. But we still have a Royal Air Force, we still have the Red Arrows, and we still have a defence posture as well. Mr. Michael Graydon uh, earlier was, was, was very harsh uh, on, on, the, on the funding and the, and the saving money and the cuts. What's your view on that? Uh, I'm afraid, in my view, that's the reality of life. It's a reality of the modern life we live in and indeed the, the political environment in which we live as well. We just have to cope with that and indeed cater for the defence needs of the country as best we can within the budgets that are allocated to defence. And talking to people in the village, they're very emotionally attached, obviously, to the area. Do we have to detach ourselves from that and, and be more realistic? Well, the Red Arrows could fly from somewhere else, and do we need the rest? Uh, no, we don't. We can save it, sell it, save money, make money. I think, yes, detach is a perhaps too strong a word. We have to accept the fact that these things have to happen. There are lots of RAF stations, and I've served on a number of them that have long since gone, that have very, very you know, powerful and illustrious histories, but as Scampton does. But the reality is we have to, in that sense, move on with the Royal Air Force in the environment we now live in. In that sense, therefore, the emotion 
And it will always be felt that this was a very important station for the Royal Air Force, the Dam Busters, the V Force, which we haven't mentioned mm -hmm. very much of, never mind the Red Arrows, and lots gone on here over the years. And it will be remembered for that. It won't be forgotten, it's just that it won't be here as an operating base. And do you think that the Red Arrows are, are copper bottom solid safe? <laughs> Exam question. It seems to me that they are, and everything we're being told by the Ministry of Defence is that they, that is the case. Um, is this a prelude? You sound a bit. You sound a bit sceptical. Well, I think everybody does. You know, in, in any defence sort of related conversation these days, you know, what will what will survive and what will go. My view is that they will stay because they are part of UK PLC. A conversation we've had before on this very subject. You know, will the Red Arrows survive? I think they probably will, and I think they will probably you know do so from a different base, clearly. Jerry, very good to have you on the programme tonight. Thank you My very pleasure. much indeed. Uh, response coming in then, uh, Christine Bell says, is there nothing sacred in this country? I'm ashamed of the greed that's happening all the time. I hope the Red Arrows can stay in Lincolnshire. Uh, Les says, um, I have great memories of being stationed there. However, we cannot live on those forever. The RAF has too many bases. It makes sense to close some. John McLaughlin says, uh, what right do they have to do this? This piece of history is not theirs to sell. It belongs to the great British public. And uh, Gay says, very sad, very, very sad and bad timing to announce this in the year of the RAF centenary. Sad day for RAF Scampton and indeed for Lincolnshire. Thank you for watching. We're back at half past ten. Bye for now.